Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Omende. Um, just to continue with a series of lectures on ascending and descending pathways. So we already tackled um, the ascending pathway and looked at various um, um, ascending tracts. So this time around we are going to discuss the descending pathways. So we will discuss, we'll start with the somatic motor pathways. So we have the um, corticospinal pathways that are responsible for voluntary control of motor activities. So we have corticobulbar tracts and corticospinal tracts. From the cerebral cortex to the nucleocranial nerves, that those are corticobulbar and corticospinal tracts are from the cerebral cortex to the spinal cord. So we have two neurons that are involved in the motor pathway. We have an upper motor neuron and a lower motor neuron. The upper motor neuron cell body is in the cerebral cortex or the brain stem. And the axon usually decussets before terminating on the lower motor neuron. While the lower motor neuron has its cell body on the ventral horn and it forms ipsilateral ventral root of the spinal nerve that supplies the muscle. So look at the picture on your right again. That's the upper motor neuron. Okay, cell body is on the cerebral cortex or the brainstem. It decussets, you can see the decussation before terminating on the lower motor neuron. So decussation occurs at the pyramid. Okay, remember the pyramids of the medulla that I showed you? And then lower motor neuron cell body is usually in the ventral horn. So this upper motor neuron has, um, sorry, the upper motor neuron terminates onto a lower motor neuron. Then lower mo motor neuron cell body is on the ventral horn of the spinal cord. You can see that in gray, and it will go and terminate onto a muscle. So descending spinal tracts usually originate from the cerebral cortex or brainstem and they control movements, muscle tone, um, spinal reflexes and equilibrium and they're also responsible for spinal autonomic function. So those are the four major roles. The motor pathways are usually divided into two. We have pyramidal and extrapyramidal. The pyramidal pathways are the direct pathway are responsible for voluntary motion while the extrapyramidal are the indirect pathways that um, maintain posture. So uh, from this picture, you can see the uh, pyramidal pathways will come from the cerebral cortex. So those are direct and control voluntary muscles. Okay. And the extra pyramidal pathways come from um, different parts, but below the cerebral cortex. So they could be tectospinal, reticulospinal, vestibulospinal or rubrospinal. So those are extra pyramidal, while pyramidal come from the cerebral cortex. So the pyramidal pathways regulate fast and fine uh, movements or skilled movements. And the origin is usually the pyramidal neurons of the precentral gyrus. Okay, so that's the primary motor area. And these are through the corticospinal tract and corticobulbar tract. So corticospinal tract synapse in the anterior horn where and the motor motor nerve roots, which are second order neuron, will carry the information to the skeletal muscles. Corticobulbar tracts are from the um, cerebral cortex, the primary motor area, and terminate on the cranial nerve nucleus. Indirect system are usually complex and multi-synaptic pathways, and we have rubrospinal that control flexor muscles. Okay, muscles that cause flexion, vestibulospinal tracts for balance and, and posture spinal tracts from the tectum, so from superior colliculi to the spinal cord, and this will control uh, head-neck movements in response to visual reflexes, and reticulospinal tracts from the reticular formation to the spinal cord. So we'll start by discussing the pyramidal pathway, so the corticospinal tract. This is usually for voluntary and di uh, discrete skilled movement of the, especially the distal part of the limb, and they terminate on the contralateral side of the spinal cord, why contralateral? Because decussation occurs at the pyramid of the medulla. So uh, we shall uh, subsequently discuss that pathway uh, in this slide. So the origin is usually the uh, four uh, parts of the cerebral cortex. The primary motor cortex at the precentral gyrus, the premotor cortex, the frontal eye field, which is the middle frontal gyrus, and other sensory cortices. So that's the origin. So then from the cortex, if you to look at this diagram, from the cortex, then nerves will pass through corona radiata, this is corona radiata, to the posterior limb of the internal capsule. 
Then from the internal capsule, they'll pass through the cruse cerebri, okay? Cruse cerebri, that's the cerebral peduncle of the midbrain. Then through the basal part of the pons, at the pons, and at the medulla, they'll pass through the, the medullary pyramids. 75 to 90% will decussate as lateral corticospinal, while the rest 10, uh, 25 to 10%, 10 to 25 percent will continue downwards uh, without uh, decussating as anterior corticospinal. So this will decussate, this anterior corticospinal will decussate just before terminating at the lower, decussation is at the lower portion, while lateral corticospinal decussation is at the medullary pyramid. So when we ask you to describe corticospinal tracts, we need to hear you talk about the detail. The origin is from four cortices, the primary motor cortex, premotor cortex, frontal eye field, and sensory cortices. Then the nerves, the upper motor neuron will come from the, the cord, all the four cortices, pass through corona radiata, then through the uh, posterior limb of internal capsule. At the midbrain, it will pass through the cerebral peduncle. At the pons, it will pass through the basal pons. And at the medulla, we find them at the pyramids. Then 75 to 90% will decussate as lateral corticospinal tract. The remaining percentage will continue downwards ipsilaterally and decussate before terminating, okay, onto the second order neuron. Then we've said second order neuron begins at the ventral horn of the spinal cord to the skeletal muscle. Okay, so I want you to look at the diagram on your right. So that is a lateral corticospinal, okay, decussation at the pyramid, while blue is anterior corticospinal. Descend down without decussating at the pyramid, but when it gets to the spinal cord level, before terminating, it crosses the midline. Okay, so both lateral and anterior corticospinal terminate on a ventral uh, root, which will leave the spinal cord through the ventral horn and go uh, to the skeletal muscle. So how are these usually distributed? 55% of uh, corticospinal nerves terminate at the cervical region, 20% are the thoracic, and 25 are the lumbosacral region. And the synapsing uh, with intermediate neurons, like alpha and mo uh, gamma motor neurons, occurs. Remember, corticobulbar tracts from the cortex to the nuclear with cranial nerves um, usually end on the contralateral side. So the right cerebral cortex uh, will uh, control the left nucleus of the cranial nerves. Then we go to rubrospinal tract from the red nucleus to the spinal cord. Red nucleus is at the midbrain at the level of the superior colliculus. So usually they cross the midline at the level of the red nucleus, then descend through the pons and the medulla, pass through the lateral white column of the spinal cord and synapse with in internancial neurons in the anterior gray column. The input to red nucleus is usually from cerebral cortex and cerebellum. So rubrospinal facilitates flexor muscles and inhibits the extensors. And the cortical rubrospinal pathway is extrapyramidal. Look at that. Look at the diagram on your right. So from the red nucleus, it will cross the midline at the same level of the red nucleus, descend through the pons and the medulla. Then we find the rubrospinal tract in the lateral white column of the spinal cord then synapse at the internal um, neurons in the anterior gray column. And these we have said they usually control the flexor muscles, facilitate them and inhibit the extensors. So second order neurons, uh, so it's from the uh, red nucleus to the spinal, to the spinal cord, so different parts of the, of the spinal cord. So after reaching the spinal cord, they will synapse with Ventral, remember they're controlling muscles, flexor muscles. So the second order neurons will be from the ventral horn to the specific muscle. Tectospinal is from the tectum to the spinal cord. So this uh, has a role in uh, reflex movements of head and neck in response to visual stimuli. The origin is usually at the superior colliculi. So they will pass ventral medially around the periaqueductal gray, the gray matter around the cerebral aqueduct and cross in the dorsal tegmental decussation. Then in the spinal cord near the ventral median fissure, that's where the tectospinal um, tract is located, and they terminate in the cervical region to cause neck movement. So cortico tectospinal pathway is again 
extra pyramidal. So you can see that on the right. So we start at the tectum, that's at the superior colliculus, all right? Then they go anteriorly and medially around the periaqueductal gray, okay, around the gray, gray matter around the, peri, uh, around the cerebral aqueduct, okay? Then they cross the dorsal uh, in the dorsal tegmental decussation. Then, of course, they descend down at the uh, basal horns and through the medulla, okay? And from the medulla, we find the tectospinal tract on the anterior column of the spinal cord that's near the uh, ventral medial fissure. So that's how you describe the tectospinal tract. So they will relay on the uh, second order neurons, again, which are motor neurons at the ventral horn, and that will go to innervate the muscles of the neck. So that's how you get to move your head and neck in response to a, a, a visual reflex. Then we have vestibulospinal tract from the vestibular nuclei, especially lateral vestibular nuclei, and this will descend on the same side in the ventral column of the spinal cord and terminate again on the ventral horn cells of the spinal cord, and they facilitate the extensor uh, muscles, so they control extensor muscle tone. So look at the diagram on your right from the lateral vestibular nuclei, go down ipsilaterally without crossing, then terminate on the ventral horn cells and, and synapse with second order neurons that will go from the ventral horn to innervate the extensor muscles. So vestibulospinal tract facilitates extensor muscles while rubrospinal tract facilitates flexor muscles. So th that is lateral vestibulospinal tract. Then medial vestibulospinal tract come from medial vestibular nuclei. Remember we have medial and lateral vestibular nuclei. So this come from the medial. They will descend on both sides in the ventral column with together with medial longitudinal fasciculus. Most fibers will end in cervical region and some in upper thoracic and this control movement of head uh, that is required for maintaining equilibrium. So you can see that, okay, the, from the medial vestibular nuclei and then descend ipsil, uh, both ipsilaterally and contralaterally, okay, in the ventral funiculus. And then they terminate in the cervical region mostly and upper thoracic. And this will relay on ventral horn nuclei that will go to cause movement of head that is required for equilibrium. So information is coming from one from one medial vestibular nuclei, but it has an influence on both sides to cause uh, movement of the head. Then reticulospinal. So this influence voluntary movement and reflex activity and muscle tone by controlling alpha and gamma motor neurons. They mediate pressure and depressor effects on the circulatory system. Remember, the reticular system um, controls vital centers, so cardiorespiratory and vasomotor function. So they originate at the reticular formation, which is uh, which are nuclei at the brainstem, the pontine and the medullary nuclei that form the reticular formation. So the medial or pontine reticulospinal tract descends ipsilaterally while the lateral or medullary reticulospinal tracts usually descend bilaterally, but both of them are located in the ventral uh, funiculus. Then we have descending autonomic fibers, and these control the autonomic... Uh, sorry, descending autonomic fibers, and this control the autonomic activity, mainly hypothalamospinal uh, uh, tract and these fibers run in the reticulospinal tracts and terminate in the autonomic neurons remember uh, we have the lateral horn in the t1 to t12 and l1 l2 that have sympathetic and sacral portions of the spinal cord that has the um, origin of the parasympathetic nerves so we have fibers that come from the hypothalamus to these regions of the spinal cord so we call them hypothalamus spinal tracts and these usually control the autonomic activity so next, uh, I'm going to discuss the applied aspects of the spinal cord in the few slides um, in the next lecture. Thank you very much.